Hello everyone, my name is Prodesilaos, also known as Prod. I am walking in the forest now and I want to bring to you another video on philosophy. I am holding my phone with the selfie stick and I am just walking in the forest. Uh, the tricky part about doing a video this way is that I have to pay attention to my surroundings uh, and avoid branches of the trees, bushes and so on. Thankfully there is a clearing nearby so I will go there and sit there and then expound on today's uh, topic. Today's topic is the working title but probably it will also be the final title but please bear with me is video games individuality and tolerance so it's those three themes I'm just avoiding some branches here so it's those three themes I am prompted to do this uh, video by an uh, email exchange I had recently uh, I was corresponding with this person uh, and at some point they remarked it was a side note an aside but they remarked something along the lines of I play video games uh, but I won't tell you about it because I know you are against it um, I replied to the person uh, but I also want to uh, do this in public I want to express my thoughts in public um, how do you know such a thing? I never uh, shared my views on the matter. I never uh, posted an article uh, for or against video games in general or gaming uh, in, partic in particular. Um, so how did you reach that uh, conclusion that I am against it? Uh, I understand. I understand why you may think this way because you see these videos for example and I am there talking and I am dead serious and maybe you get the impression that this is how I always am uh, but this is uh, not the truth because I have a sense of humor I am very relaxed but it just happens that in these videos I just focus on the topic and I try not to distract myself with jokes or whatnot but uh, trust me I am not some stereotypical serious guy I am not so you get the impression that I am some stern lieutenant and I will just sit there and observe your every word or your every action and be ready to discipline you and be ready to point out your errors. I don't do that. I simply don't. What I do, everything I do when I talk, is a suggestion. I ask you, I appeal to your reason. I appeal to your experiences to think about what I am uh, talking, the topics that I expound on, the topics I cover. I am not issuing directives. I am not saying, do this, do that. Why? Because I say so. I am the philosopher and I have spoken. I don't do that. I don't believe that. I don't believe in that kind of power relationship where I am in charge, I am uh, sitting on my throne pontificating, and everybody in society must listen to me. I don't believe in that kind of relationship. I think that I am a regular fellow like you and everybody else who just happens to have a certain interest in uh, abstract uh, concepts. And I just speak my mind. I just share my opinion. So my opinion is not the word of God, as it were, okay? So please, I want you every, every time, please think what I am saying. Don't just accept it. Oh, Protesilo said this, therefore this. It's not how it works. Maybe I make a mistake. Or maybe 
and which is the point I am always making, you need to apply the general points to the specifics of your case. You need to understand what your reality is. What are the factors pertinent to your uh, condition? And that's why I speak in abstract terms, because the abstractions are not always the same. When you particularize them, when you instantiate them, they are not always the same. So I don't speak with details. So do this and then all the details. It's not how it works. Anyway, I am here at the clearing. So I want to climb up there, but maybe I can show you a bit better. Uh, up, up there. Uh, I don't know, maybe you underestimate the slope. Uh, but you can see basically like this, you cannot see, uh, you can see how far it is. So, uh, let's get moving. And let's start with the topic of video games. So, I am perfectly fine with video games. There is nothing wrong inherent to them. There is nothing intrinsically wrong with video games as a medium and with gaming with playing video games it's okay it's fine it's just another medium that we have to share experiences to express ourselves artistically to tell stories that sort of thing and of course uh, gaming is also a technological achievement right because you have uh, programming, you have all those algorithms that go into it, you have procedurally generated environments, animation, blah blah blah. So gaming is an interdisciplinary medium. It brings together and it blends art and programming. So we have storytelling, we have painting, we have music, and we have code as well. So just let me uh, get through this tricky spot. So I just avoid this branch, proceed carefully on this narrow stretch of land. I am balancing, carefully avoiding another branch. And I am almost at the point where I need to be. Let's also jump here. Ah, so. This is a bit better. You can see where I am. Uh, I don't know if I can check. We cannot see the bottom actually. But maybe you will get an idea. Uh, it's not. It's not great. You cannot really uh, estimate how steep the slope is, but you will have to trust it. Uh, there is another slope here that I need to climb. It's another steep one, but there is a rock there. So I want to be at the rock. So we will have philosophy on the rocks, okay? So please bear with me and uh, I just need to climb this point, which is another tricky terrain here. There is gravel, there are bushes and they have thorns and everything. So one needs to be careful. And take it slow. That's the idea always. So video games is a technological marvel. It is a major achievement of our times. It is a major breakthrough in what we can do. Where we can have animated pictures and music and storytelling and interactivity all in one package. It really is something amazing, if you think about it. Uh, so I am at the peak here. So you can see the forest around me. Uh, pine trees, but here I am at the clearing. So more pine trees here in front of me. So there is the rock here. I will just sit here. The sun is not out yet. It is not uh, shining on me yet. Uh, so let me sit here. I don't know if this view is good or if I should uh, have the, uh, the pine trees as a backdrop. But maybe I will check with the sun once it comes out. 
Video gaming then is fine. As a medium, it is perfectly fine, okay? So I have nothing against video gaming per se or against the act of playing video games. I think it is an enriching experience to be able to uh, enjoy video games, to be able to see a world that otherwise does not exist to you, otherwise is not accessible to you, to experience a story interactively, to be a part of it, to um, assume the role of another hero in uh, an otherworldly world. So that's all wonderful. There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, my problems with gaming uh, are not specific to the medium. They have to do with the industry. They are business practices. So they are not specific to gaming in that regard. They are, they exist in all sorts of uh, business endeavors because this is how our world works on the premise of year on year fiscal growth, on the premise of registering um, what they call profits, but it's not really about profits, it's about growth. So if your uh, company is decelerating in terms of growth, so instead of 2.5%, they are growing at 2%, the investors are in panic mode. What is going on? Please explain. We need uh, to see growth. What is happening? Please do something about it. This is how our world works. Okay. And this is how the gaming industry works as well. Uh, as such, we have lots of uh, patterns that are um, inspired, that are engendered by underlying business uh, priorities, which are against the user, which influence the behavior of gamers in a negative way. They condition the, the gamer to do stuff that is not natural, that does not proceed that does not develop organically from the, from the um, gameplay itself. For example, you have all those uh, free-to-play games and they have a, um, a, a progression system and you have to do some repetitive task, which is, which is not how the game is naturally played, but you have to do this repetitive task to get the achievement and uh, to progress in this uh, in the season to be successful in terms of your um, of your progress. So you are, as a gamer, you are there to play the game. Let's say it's a shooting game, a first-person shooter, and instead of playing the game naturally, you are always picking up uh, a gun that is uh, what the achievement demands, and you just play that with that specific gun, even though it, it is not natural for that specific gameplay. Let's say it's a short-range gun, and you are uh, on a map with long ranges, and you keep playing the short-range gun. That sort of thing. So it's not natural, but the, the business model incentivizes you or pushes you towards that direction, to keep doing that repetitive thing, and eventually they add in uh, microtransactions and an entire system that is inspired by gambling. And they keep you in that loop, they keep you basically hooked, basically addicted. So you keep uh, feeding your addiction with that uh, uh, gameplay and then giving them your money. So it's an invidious uh, practice. It is, um, it is not a, a nice way of making money. You can simply sell the game and make money that way. Just make a good game. Uh, that used to be the case, but I think nowadays it's about um, making money th this way, but also spying on users and all the other practices we see in uh, the modern world, which are unfortunate. But none of this is inherent to the medium of gaming. None of this is um, a problem of playing games, okay? So this is something that we need to... Uh, distinguish. We need to be able to tell apart what is the business side of things and the specific kind of business we have nowadays because not business isn't inherently bad either. So this specific business we have now, this specific type of business practices and uh, gaming as a medium of expression, as a medium of 
entertainment, as art, as programming, and so on. So I am fine with gaming, okay? Just to clarify this point. Personally, I am not a gamer. I am not a gamer because gaming as a hobby is very expensive. Even if you play indie games, even if you buy those uh, cheaper games, you still need to have a fairly decent computer. You need to have uh, storage on your hard uh, drive. Uh, you need to have maybe um, a controller uh, and uh, all those, uh, all that uh, setup if you play on the computer. Or you need a console and so on. So you get the idea. It's not uh, something that you can uh, do cheaply. For example, the way I walk here, uh, it's just uh, me. Okay, I have... Uh, uh, it's um, the cost, the economic cost, the, biz the um, financial cost rather is zero, practically zero, okay? So I can just come here, breathe fresh air, um, listen to the birds uh, here, hear them. Maybe you can hear them as well if I remain silent for a second. Anyhow, I can listen to the birds. I can watch the sun rise and... Uh, uh, have a good experience this way uh, but with uh, gaming you need to have uh, some money you need to put some money into it money which I don't have so it's that simple uh, that's the one thing the other thing is that um, when I am on the computer I usually do some kind of work so uh, not usually I always do some kind of work uh, but I will either be coding I will be doing something related to Emacs, to my Emacs packages, either the ones I maintain and continue to iterate on, or some new project, okay? Uh, or I am writing. I am writing emails, I am writing articles for my website, that sort of thing. So it's uh, always busy when I am on my computer. And you can check my website, protesilaos.com, uh, and you will see that I publish practically every day. There is... Um, I am fairly productive. So there is a lot going on uh, there. And it's not just a philosophy, okay? Uh, so this is why I don't play video games. But I am not against the idea of playing. If, for example, it is a rainy day, and let's say I have no access to the internet, so I cannot uh, do my email, I cannot uh, send the emails to people, or um, let's say, for example, my Emacs is broken. It doesn't, but let's say. That sort of thing. So I basically cannot do what I normally do, okay? And um, I have uh, access to a video game. Let's say I have downloaded Super Tax Card, which is a free software game available on uh, GNU slash Linux. Maybe it exists on other uh, systems as well, but I don't know. So I have Super Tax Card, I'm, and I'm like, okay, let's do it. I will now race with the bots. And I will prove who is king. <laughs> so I will um, just have a good time. Yeah, why not? I have no problem doing that. It's just a matter of um, the situation being the right one. So it's important, in terms of my disposition, to distinguish between not doing something because of an uh, ideological view against it and not doing something simply because uh, there is not enough time uh, for it, simply because it does not coincide with uh, other things in your life. So I am not dogmatic against gaming. I have no problem against gaming. I am just not available given the prevailing conditions, not available for the time being. So this is the basic idea with gaming, okay? Now, my problem in general with any kind of activity and my suggestion to you, it's not an exhortation, it's not a directive, it's not an edict, okay, as I said earlier. It's just food for thought, just something for you to think about. So my idea is that every activity that we do, everything that we do has to be done in moderation. We have to find the right balance for it. If we go to extremes, we create problems for ourselves. And when we are uh, problematic inwardly, we tend to be problematic outwardly. So we are also a problem to other people. 
And this also relates to what I said in my, in my previous video about uh, self-importance and elitism, where um, we don't want to develop tunnel vision. We don't want to uh, live in our own bubble and uh, to only interact with a very limited set of uh, activities, uh, to, to engage in a very limited set of activities and to only interact with a specific type of person and to only ever uh, see and think something very specific and lose a sense of the bigger picture, of uh, the world at large, of uh, reality beyond our little bubble. What is the problem? What is the problem when we live in a bubble, when we develop tunnel vision in this way? The problem is that we no longer have balance in our life. We no longer have a sense of perspective. And you may say now, okay, I have no balance in my life. Okay, Protesilaos, I hear what you say. But I want to play video games all day, like 14 hours a day, that's all I want to do. And my friends will all be gamers. And all our discussions, bar none, will be about gaming. It is uh, our passion and our obsession and we are proud of it. What's your problem? That's fine. That's uh, fine to have a passion and uh, to have friends uh, with whom to share uh, this interest of yours. That's perfectly fine. Uh, the problem is that when you are in that kind of uh, warped reality, you can no longer relate to people who are not in that milieu. Okay, So you cannot really communicate with someone who is not a gamer uh, in this uh, hardcore sense, the way you are, 14 hours a day, and that sort of thing. So, if we are all like this, if we are all obsessed about a very narrow, narrowly defined uh, topic, and if all we do revolves around that uh, specific thing, then we have a, a problem of communicating then there is miscommunication. We can no longer have something in common. We can no longer talk to each other because there is nothing between us. I speak one language. I speak about my passion. You speak about your passion and there is nothing in between. There is nothing that uh, we can talk about. And when we are in this kind of warped reality, all of us, and when we have miscommunication, we tend to go to extremes. We tend to subscribe to parochial views, to extreme views, and we tend to think of the world in simplistic binary terms. We tend to develop notions, uh, simplistic notions of we against them. And we are the good and they are the bad and there is no nuance whatsoever, okay? You cannot think in nuanced terms, in terms of the subtlety of uh, things, when you are uh, lacking perspective. Because you cannot put yourself in the other person's uh, uh, shoes, as we say. You cannot view the world from their point of view. Or you cannot at least try to approximate that uh, perspective, that uh, view, okay? And when you cannot really relate to the other person, when you cannot have any sort of empathy, you think of them as an alien. You think that what they say, what they do, which is not the same as what you do, is not good, it's bad. You dismiss it. You you develop a sense of being a fanatic. A fanatic in favor of what you have, but uh, more egregiously, a fanatic against what you do not have. A fanatic against what is not your interest, what is not uh, pertinent to what you are doing. So what I am talking about in terms of balance is about uh, having basically a more harmonious society.
It is about trying not to demonize the other persons, trying by having a sense of perspective, trying to understand where they are coming from. It's not that you will agree with everyone. That's impossible. I am not saying that we should all have a middle view and uh, nobody should be opinionated about anything. That's not possible. I am opinionated. I try to uh, keep an open mind in everything, but the fact remains that there are issues that I am opinionated. But I have the right disposition. I remain open to discussion. Maybe we have different views, but uh, if we talk reasonably, if we exchange views in a spirit of sincerity, with the intent of finding what the truth is, instead of winning the argument, that inane uh, idea of bragging about winning, which is not going anywhere. But if we are trying to find the truth, okay, then I am fine. Let's talk. I am perfectly fine with that. Because by talking, by exchanging views, even if I have an opinion, I might reconsider it. I might revise it. I might see what you are saying. Or you might see what I am saying. And we might together emancipate ourselves from whatever falsehood we currently believe in. Okay? So that's uh, an important thing. And this comes from not being um uh, from not being narrowly focused from not having tunnel vision by the way the sun is out and it is beaming directly in my eyes so i have to see what i can do maybe i don't know which is the better angle now uh, uh okay let's let's switch like this so you can also see the the pine tree okay uh it's still in my eye so maybe like this maybe like this okay uh, so, if you have this tunnel vision, this uh, view of the world where everything revolves around that uh, narrow niche that you are um, active in, if you have that, then you are starting to create problems for others. But uh, what about yourself? Are you creating problems for yourself? I think the answer is yes. The the lack of a balanced uh, lifestyle is also pernicious for the individual. Because if you are spending all day gaming, you are depriving your, or not just gaming, any kind of activity, okay? You are depriving yourself of experiencing the plurality, the diversity of this world. You deny yourself this chance. You preemptively say no to other activities, to other experiences, and by extension to other people. You do not allow other people to come into your world. You block them out in advance without ever knowing them, without ever giving them a chance. And when you are, of course, in this state of not understanding, not experiencing, the diversity of this world, the plurality of this world, of course, then you are intolerant. Of course, then you are a fanatic. Because you also do not recognize the diversity of the human condition. The fact that we are all different. The fact that we are multifaceted. The fact that there is complexity to this animal that we call human. The fact that you cannot apply simplistic binaries, good, bad, black, white. These don't work. These do not describe humans. These do not explain the human condition. These are not helpful in solving our problems, in understanding ourselves in interpersonal relations. When you are imbalanced then, when you obsess about something, you are not 
uh, helping yourself in having a rounded, a more rounded view of the world. And you also don't have a more rounded personality. You don't, you are not really trying to be a better person. You just want to vindicate. You just, not, you just want to justify, to confirm, to preserve what you always thought as good. What you always uh, took as uh, granted. What you always took for granted, you want to keep doing that thing and nothing else. So you don't give yourself the chance to grow as a person. To be more uh, enlightened, as it were. To understand things from a higher vantage point. To see things from a different perspective. And to be a better person in general. A better, a better person in everything that you do. This is now uh, the point of individuality. The point of everybody being different. Okay? I am not saying, as I said in the introduction, uh, I am not advocating for a specific set of guidelines. You should do X, Y, Z. Because I am a philosopher and I speak the truth and I have said this. I don't do that. Why am I not doing that? Why am I not doing videos where I rant about something and where I say, oh, this is how the world should be. I am not doing that because that would be inconsistent with my uh, philosophy. It would be inconsistent with what I am talking about, about being honest, about recognizing what the case is. What are the factors in their interplay? What, uh, what is the dynamic in force? And to understand that the case is not static. The case is dynamic. Simply put, to be concrete, I don't want to do um, philosophy, philosophical videos where I am too abstract. I can keep those in writing. In concrete terms, being honest about the world means recognizing the diversity of humans, as I mentioned earlier. Means recognizing that there is individuation, differentiation between us, inherent to us. Every one of us is unique. We have things in common, yes, of course. Lots of things in common. We have a shared humanity. There is no question about that. But that is a general category. Within it, we have particularities. We have elements of differentiation, all of us. Okay? So, each person's individuality is different from another person. What is good for me, what I like, may not be good for you. It may not be what you like. And that's perfectly fine, which is why I say there is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all. We have this, we have these um, roles in our society, in our world, where we try to uh, have people conform with. Sometimes those are possible. It is possible to conform with a given role and have no problem with it. But Sometimes it isn't. And sometimes you are forcing a person, an individual, into a mold that they just don't fit in. And then you try to do what the myth of Procrustes uh, is about. Procrustes, the myth, there is the Procrustean bed. So there is this idea that you place someone on a bed and if they don't fit, you will stretch them or you will cut off the excess part of their limbs so that they fit into the bed, okay? This is the idea. So we are forcing someone into a Procrustean bed. We have to stretch them, we have to torture them, we have to do whatever it takes to make them fit in the mold. And this is harmful. 
This is harmful because you are no longer thinking about the underlying person. You are valorizing, you are giving too much value to this role without considering the person involved. So we have this in society and we tend to forget the individual. We, we talk about individualism, the individual, individual rights and so on. But many times we forget about it. We forget about the fact that every person is unique and every person to a degree needs an individualized uh, approach to them an idiosyncratic approach because every person is idiosyncratic that's uh, by the way a term that comes from medicine and it has to do with the fact that every person's constitution is unique okay uh, so this is the idea as such when you are gaming that is part of your individuality that is part of what expresses you. That is fine. That is perfectly fine. I have nothing to say to that. I cannot say that you should be gaming for, let's say, uh, two hours a day. And if you do three hours, then you are in trouble. Because that kind of guideline comes from nowhere. That kind of guideline is, may not be specific to you. And if you don't want to think about gaming, let's think about uh, here, what I am doing here. For some people, sitting in the forest may not be interesting. They may get bored. After 10 minutes, they may be like, okay, why are we here? Uh, uh, I cannot do anything. I want, to, I want some action. Why are you just sitting there doing nothing? Whereas I can sit here for an hour and just uh, talk, let's say. And by the way, uh, this is my second walk because I also took my dog for a walk earlier, uh, but I came back to do the video. I don't do the video with my dog present because I need to pay attention to him just to be sure that he doesn't get into trouble. But you get the idea. So I am not issuing directives. I am not giving specific guidelines because those tend to be presumptuous. Those tend to come from a place of uh, elitism, of me thinking that I know better what is good for you. And the answer is that I don't. I don't know better what is good for you. I know about general things. I can discern patterns and reason about abstractions and understand the abstract structure and see how everything is related. Yes, I can do that. This is what philosophy is about to an extent, for sure. But this does not mean that I have omniscience. This does not mean that I have gained insight into the specifics of every person's individuality. That's not possible. And anyone who pretends to know what is good for you about everything, okay, there are specific things that we can know, but about everything, they are simply wrong. There are things where we know what is good and what is not good for you. For example, if you drink uh, poison, that is not good for you, okay? I know that. I don't need to know your idiosyncrasies to figure that out. Some cases are obvious, but now I am talking about Matters that are pertinent to our selfhood. Matters that are not really clear cut. Where we cannot clearly say that, okay, this will harm you, no questions asked. For those things, we need to be more open-minded. We need to be more tolerant. And so we have this notion of tolerance. Because... Tolerance, to an extent, is a buzzword. To an extent, it is what the politicians are doing when they are virtue signaling. I used to work in politics, um, in case you don't know. I used to work at the European Parliament. And I have seen virtue signaling in action. 
I have seen people who say certain things because they will win votes. But they don't act in accordance with those words. They may say, for example, let's say something simple. Let's uh, care about the environment. Uh, we are all green now. There, there is climate change and we have to be green. Okay? And while saying that, they will have uh, all their uh, lights uh, switched on. They will not switch off their lights, never. They will have the faucet, uh, you know, um, flowing, the water flowing in the faucet. Uh, they will be uh, wasteful in uh, this sort of way, okay? You get the idea. So, the words are not consistent with the deeds. So, we have a world, we live in a world where many people are like this, where they say one thing and they do another thing. So, tolerance is a bit like that. Everybody is tolerant now. Because it is, uh, if you are not tolerant, you are singled out as a, uh, as a bully. And that's okay, of course. If you are not tolerant, why we should uh, not point that out? Uh, without going to the extreme of witch hunting, of course, okay? Respectful of everybody's opinion, but we also have the opinion to say that you are not a good person if you are intolerant and uh, toxic. But everybody has this um, politically correct way of being tolerant. So this is not what I am talking about, okay? I am talking about a disposition. I am talking about seeing the other person and not assuming too many things. I am talking about giving the other person a fair chance. Give them a chance to to show you who they are, to tell you about what they think. Not, don't assume things. Don't set up obstacles between, between you and them. Don't try to preempt this other person from coming into your world. To use the example again with this uh, email that prompted uh, the present video, the person might... Uh, might have been influenced by the fact that I am a philosopher and when I am doing those videos, I am serious, okay? And uh, they may have reached the conclusion that they may have entertained this belief, this bias, that philosophers are super strict. And maybe you see me, maybe you see me that um, I have, let's say, a, a specific lifestyle, I... I am very particular about my diet. I enjoy being physically active and that sort of thing. I have, let's say, a Spartan lifestyle. And you may think that I am also a Spartan lieutenant, a Spartan warrior. And uh, if you say anything, I, am, I will be there uh, uh, about to, you know, go for your head. Nothing could, be, nothing could be further from the truth. You are not giving me a chance to show you who I really am. You are not giving me a chance to prove to you that I am just a regular fellow. I have specific interests, yes. And you have specific interests, yes. And everybody else has their own individuality, for sure. But I am normal. I can cry, I can laugh, I can be wrong about many things. And I am open to being corrected when I am wrong. That's perfectly fine. I am not an egoist. There are aspects to my disposition that uh, used to be wrong when I was younger. I was an egoist. I was stubborn. I was um, opinionated and would not recognize my mistakes. And so on and so forth. And I have talked about many other concepts in my previous videos. But I have worked on those. I have worked so that I am honest. Honest with myself and as honest as possible uh, with other people. So that I am not strongly opinionated, so that I, am, that I am not obstinate, so that I am not narrow-minded, and so on and so forth. And so that I am not as well uh, in a rush the whole time and... Uh, disturbed and in panic mode 
I have learned to be in control to the extent possible and to take things slow and to be patient and to be honest. All those things that I talk about. Uh, so if you are not giving me a chance, if you think of me in a way that is not consistent with me, it is more difficult for me to be human. It is more difficult for me to have a human connection with you. It is more difficult for me to just be normal. Because whenever I do something that you that we would consider normal, for example, if I crack a joke, you will you will think, maybe you will also say it, but you will definitely think that, oh, you surprise me. So you see what I'm saying? Um, whereas if you don't assume too many things about me and about everyone, but if you don't assume too many things, then you will no longer be surprised. You will simply be, ah, okay, I learned something new. But it will not come as a surprise. It will not be, oh, you completely upset my expectation. You complete, completely flipped the thoughts I have and now I have completely different thoughts. Because when we are presumptuous in this way, even if we have good intentions, okay, but when we are presumptuous in this way, we are setting up obstacles, as I said, and this creates friction. This creates friction in our communications. We are misunderstanding each other. Whereas what we want is to have as low friction as possible so that we can connect. We can connect better. We can communicate better. And this feeds into what I said about tolerance, about having a sense of perspective, understanding the diversity of this world, the diversity of the human condition, the multifacetedness of humanity, the individuation or that is uh, inherent to humans, that sort of thing, okay? So this, these all come together. And I was using video gaming as a case in point. It could have been anything, okay? It could have been any kind of innocuous activity that people do. But I simply picked gaming because I think it is something that you can uh, relate to uh, and uh, think about. But please don't focus on gaming per se. It's just an example. Uh, so there is that. Um, I think that's all for today, folks. I will just descend, but I, you don't need to uh, watch that. I will just descend because when you, when you start, you know, uh, following the, the goat trail, sometimes you think of yourself as a goat. Uh, so this is what I am doing, basically. I'm just climbing those uh, steep uh, uh, cliffs, those uh, steep mountains. I am just uh, jumping from one rock to the other and hope for the best. <laughs> so that's it. Maybe I can go to this uh, point here I was earlier, now that the sun is out, to give you one final view. And then I close the video. But let's be careful also. So, just to uh, come here and avoid the branch, so you see how it goes. Uh, and we have another branch here. Whoops. And let me give you a final view, and then I am off. Uh, so, let's see what we've got. So, you see... You see the mountains, you see the pine trees. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice day today. Again, the mountains of Cyprus. This is the Trodos mountain range. Uh, and I will be going down there now. But I won't record it because I will definitely roll and we don't want that. Uh, so, thank you very much for your attention, folks. Please be uh, mindful of other people. Please respect their individuality. Please try to have a balanced lifestyle. Try to express your individuality in moderation. So try to have diversity in your life. Try to not develop tunnel vision. Try not to be obsessed 
and super passionate about what you have. Try to find a balance in your life and try to uh, give the chance to other people. Try to give them a fair chance. Let them come into your world, at least potentially. Uh, so that will be a better place uh, for all of us. It will be better for you and it will be better for everybody else. So, thank you very much for your attention, folks. Uh, I just need to go somewhere where I can see the buttons on the screen. So, thank you very much for your attention, folks. That's all for today. Take care. Goodbye. Just close it.